Hey everyone and welcome to another edition of BGP Fundamentals. So in the previous video, we discussed about IBGP and primarily we ended the video with a problem. And that problem was basically why IBGP is not scalable. The primary reason behind that was that if we are going to mesh each and every router, uh, that is we are going to establish a neighborship of each and every router with the other routers in the network, uh, then we will need a lot of uh, pairing to be established within the BGP network. And this is not practically possible. For example, if you have like 10 routers, we would need something like 45 pairing sessions uh, established between the routers. Although these sessions can be established, but adding just a single router to the network will cause us to again establish connection with all the other routers. And this is not a practical solution. So how do we overcome it? So we come to today's topic, which is route reflectors. So what are route reflectors? So route reflector is basically used for a IBGP scenario. Now, primarily BGP was never made for internal routing. That is for inside NAS. BGP was only made for uh, connecting uh, between two ASs, between two autonomous systems. And when the BGP was made, uh, IBGP scenario was not taken into account. So as BGP developed, uh, route reflectors came into existence. Why? Because BGP is scalable. We know that already. Uh, we have millions and millions of routes that we can broadcast to BGP, but we cannot do it through uh, other interior gateway protocols. So there are scenarios where uh, we will need BGP to be used even inside our own network. And IBGP comes into existence there. So route reflectors will help us overcome the scalable problems of IBGP meshing. We won't have to mesh. So if you remember our previous scenario, this is what it looked like. Uh, we have AS100 and AS300 connecting to AS200. Uh, we are assuming AS300 has multiple routers in between and they are going to be configured as an IBGP network. Now what we had to do was we were connecting router 2 to router 3 router 3 to router 4 and then again establishing appearing between router 2 and router 4. Uh, practically we can do this when we have small number of uh, routers in our IBGP scenario network but when we have a lot of routers this is not possible as we just now discuss and route reflector will be something that we will use but route reflectors come with certain rules there are certain uh, guidelines uh, that come with route reflectors let's understand first what those rules are so the first rule is if an nlri that is a network layer reachability information is received from a non route reflector client then it will only be advertised to the route reflector client it will not be advertised to a non uh, route reflector client what it means is if a router is acting as a route reflector and it receives a bgp pair uh, advertisement or nlri from a non-RR client, from a non-route reflector client, it will only advertise it to a route reflector client. It will not pass it to any non-route reflector clients. Then comes the second rule. The second rule states that if an NLRI is received from an RR client, it will be advertised to both non-RR clients and RR clients. And it will also be sent back to the RR client from where it came from. but that will be rejected by that RR client because of the originator ID uh, information in that NLRI. So what is that original ID information? Uh, we will just understand it in a bit. Now in this scenario, what is happening is uh, this is uh, one router is a route reflector client that is it is configured as a route reflector client to this route reflector. So if this kind of an information is received by the route reflecting uh, router, then it will advertise it to all the uh, non RR clients and to RR clients as well, as well as the RR client from where this information came from. But obviously uh, this will get discarded. Otherwise there'll be a routing loop which will be created. Now the RR client which is uh, discarding is because of the originator ID path attribute. Now the route reflector will add two more path attributes uh, to the NLRI. One is the cluster ID and one is the originator ID. Again, we will come to it in a bit. Now let's go to rule number three. Now in rule number three, it's if 
uh, advertisement of an NLRI is received from an EBG PPA, it will be advertised to both RR client and a non-RR client. So uh, if a eBGP router is uh, advertising it to the route reflecting uh, router, then it will be sent to uh, the RR client router and to non-RR client router. So all these routers are in the IBGP sphere and the eBGP router is from the uh, another AS as is in our scenario. So let's look at this example to understand how does this rule actually take into effect. So uh, we have an NLRI for 10.1.0 uh, slash 24. Uh, this is the route reflector client and this is the route reflector for this route reflector client. Uh, then we have another route reflector which is uh, acting as a route reflector for this route reflector client which is on the far right. Uh, these two route reflectors are, are not uh, configured as a route reflector for each other. So they are not a route reflector uh, for each other. Uh, they are just acting as an IBGP peer for each other. So uh, when this uh, route reflector client advertises it to uh, the route reflecting uh, router on the left hand side, it is received as a normal IBGP advertisement. Because of rule number two, because this route was received from an RR client, it will be advertised to both non-RR clients and RR clients. So the route reflector uh, on the left uh, will advertise it to the route reflector on the right, which is not an RR client for the route reflector uh, router on the left. Now, uh, when this route reflector on the right hand side advertise it to the router on the far right, uh, which is the route reflector client, a uh, rule number one will apply. That is, uh, if an NLRI is received from a uh, non-RR client, it will be advertised to only RR clients. And uh, this far right router is the RR client for the right hand side route reflector. So this is how the uh, route propagates uh, through the IBGP network and uh, the route are exchanged. And we do not have to uh, do a full mesh BGP between all the four routers. Because if we had to do a full mesh BGP between all these four routers, we would have to establish at least six peers. Uh, that is, if we follow the formula, that is n uh, into n minus one divided by two. So that is four into three divided by two, which is six peering sessions. We don't have to go through a lot of hassles and we can just use route reflectors. So let's go back to our example and let's see how we can do in Microtech router OS v7. There are some surprises there which you would not like or uh, which uh, will make your life a bit tougher than what it should have been. But let's look into it and understand how do we do it in router OS v7. So this is our scenario. And uh, if you want to work on this scenario, I'll leave it on GitHub repository. Uh, the link is down below. And this scenario will be all solved there. Uh, you can unsolve and you can try your hands on with this scenario in your own time also. So what we essentially want to do here is uh, router one has a prefix of 192.168.1.0 slash 24, uh, which we want to advertise it to router five. And router five has a uh, prefix of 192.168.5.0. Uh, slash 24 which we want to advertise it to router 1. Now uh, if we were to use a IBGP scenario for router 2, 3, 4 uh, the problems we already know. So what we want to essentially want to do is make router 3 a route reflector for both router 4 and router 2. Now the configuration for this is pretty simple. Uh, we just need to get into our initial configuration what we have already done and let's enter routing BGP connections. And let's see the configuration here. We have already set the role to IBGP RR, which says that this is an IBGP route reflector. And if you look at the configuration for uh, router four, so uh, when we look at the configuration to router three, it already says that the role is IBGP route reflector client. So ideally everything should work properly. And if you were in router OS v6, this would actually work. You don't have to do any other configuration. Now, because this is a router uh, OS v7, uh, there is a slight problem. To understand this problem, uh, what I have done is I have opened the documentation in uh, Microtech website, and I'm coming to a specific topic of next hop choice. Uh, so, so I'll just read through this uh, documentation, and you will understand the problem. So the next shop choice attribute basically affects the outgoing next shop attribute selection. Note that the next shop 
uh, set in filter will always take precedence. So uh, whatever you set in the filter rules uh, will take precedence over whatever you have set in the configuration itself. Also note that the next stop is not changed on route reflection except when it's set in the filter. Now, this is a problem. So if we are doing a route reflection, the next stop is actually not changing and the whole purpose of route reflection is getting defeated. So uh, the role of route reflection will have no effect on the next stop of the router. And that is why uh, we were using this attribute. So what we need to do is the clue is pretty much given here in the documentation itself. We will have to set it in the filter rules. So uh, let's see how do we set it in filter rules. And we need to create this filter rules only for router three. So let's have a look at it. So let's add a uh, rule here. Uh, let's see the options. So uh, we need to add a chain and let's name it as to R4. So this is going to a router four. And then the rule is, uh, is equals to so uh, now the rules are pretty different. Uh, the filtering rules that you're going to apply here are very different from router OS v6. They are much uh, similar to what you do in Juniper, which is a kind of scripting. Uh, so this will be in inside an inverted commas. And uh, the condition is going to be if. And inside the brackets, we are going to be putting the condition, which is if the destination is 192.162.0 slash 24. And the result is going to be again a space bar here and uh, we need to put this inside a curly braces and what it's going to do is set the gateway and the gateway that we'll be putting is uh, 10.34.1.1. Uh, this is the IP address that is going on ether one towards a uh, router four and after putting a semicolon, uh, let's add another uh, action and the action is going to be want to accept this uh, nlri we want to accept this prefix so enter so i got an error actually uh, while putting my condition uh, that is uh, equal to uh, you need to put double equal to sign here and that's pretty much it and uh, you can just print it to see uh, the chain and the chain in the filter rule will automatically get populated to a dynamic chain here and if you go to bgp here connections uh to apply this rule uh to router r4 you can just set uh zero so let's set zero to output dot filter uh you can just put tab and the option is change and here if you just press tab it's to r4 because there are no other chains available right now and that's it now the problem is that uh since the filter rule will have precedence only what is there will be accepted everything else is going to get automatically rejected so all the other prefixes that were coming from say router one or router three will automatically get rejected uh, while going towards router four so to make the whole thing what you need to do is you need to uh, accept the filter for router one uh, prefix also and uh, router three itself prefix also let's see what has happened in router four if we uh, print uh, we still see that this is an invalid state so let's go back into router three in router three let's do one thing uh, let's go into bgp sessions uh, let's print the session and we have a session with the uh, router 4. So uh, let's do one thing. Uh, let's uh, refresh one address family IPv4 and uh, resend on one IPv4. So let's see what happens here now. And yep this is now working so in any time uh you are doing it uh primarily you just need to resend uh, you don't need to refresh the whole connection which i have done uh but resending alone will help but uh you also see uh something that 1.0 and 3.0 which were going earlier are not going anymore to router 4. the primary reason for that is because as i told you the we need to populate the whole route filter that is going towards router 4. Otherwise, uh, every other prefix will be discarded. 
So let's take a pause here and what I'll do is I'll uh, build the whole rule for uh, towards router 4 and towards router 2. I think you have already got the idea. I will post the script uh, down below also and I'll just show you what I have done. Okay, welcome back. And uh, what I've done is I've added two more uh, change to router 4 for destination 1.0 uh, slash 24 that is for router 1 prefix and uh, 3.0 that is the router's 3 its own prefix. And then I've added three more change to router two. Uh, again, 3.0, this is the router three zone prefix uh, that it wants to advertise. And the prefix coming from router four and to router five. Uh, I'll just take a print and show you. And these are all the uh, change that I've added. And let's go into the chain. And now we see two chains actually. Uh, one is to router two and one is to router four. Now let's go into the BGP uh, connections and uh, so we have already set the output filter chain to router 4 uh, while it's going to router 4 we need to set the same for uh, router 2 so uh, set 1 output dot uh, filter uh, chain and to router 2. Now what I need to do is I need to go into sessions uh let's check a printout and what i want to do is uh resend uh, zero uh for address family ipv4 and uh, i will do the same for the router 4 connection as well now let's check out what is happening in router 4 are we getting all the prefixes and uh, yes now we get all the prefixes uh, that are coming from all the other routers. Uh, let's check on router 5 also if it's getting a valid prefix here. So we log into the router and IP route print and all the prefixes are now valid inside a router 5 also and we can to make ourselves sure let's see if our client on router 1 is also getting all the prefixes and it is also getting all the prefixes now and all the network layer reachability is done so i have that clarified uh, your situation on a uh, route reflectors and how do you use them inside router os v7 and, and now we come to the final part how is the loop prevention uh, prevented in uh, route reflectors because primarily all the uh, routers inside the IBGP are going to be using the same AS number and we had understood previously in the videos that BGP uses AS path as the attribute to check if there is a loop in the routing uh, table so uh, as I told you there are two uh, other attributes uh, that are introduced uh, in route reflector one is the original IT and this is an optional non-transitive BGP attribute and it is created by the first route reflector and it's set to the value of the router ID of the router which is going to inject this into the AS now if uh, the or uh, original ID is already populated uh, on an NRI then it should never be overwritten so if there is an originator ID already on an NLRI, that means if that NLRI is already populated with uh, originator ID information, it is not overwritten. Uh, otherwise, what will happen is the router which is injecting the route into the system uh, will input its own router ID as the originator ID. The second is the cluster list. Uh, again, this is non-transitive BGP attribute. Uh, it is updated at route reflector and this attribute is again not overwritten but appended. So whenever a router will receive a cluster list with uh, its own uh, router ID in it, it will discard it. So these are the two attributes that route reflector will use uh, to prevent looping in the network. So I hope that uh, today's video actually clarified for you how do you use IBGP in your own network and how do route reflectors work. Do let me know what you think and uh, do like my videos and please do subscribe to my channel to get the latest updates. And till we meet the next time, goodbye.